Hi there, everybody. Let's talk about the second week's work, Lab 2. Um, this week, we're going to be digging into one of the two basic um, types of data that we use in GIS. It's called vector data. So I just really briefly want to go over um, the differences between vector and raster data um, so that you can kind of get the big picture, the forest, um, before we dig into the trees. So here's, here's a cartoon map looking down on a river. And um, vector data can represent this landscape by collecting XY coordinate points at specific locations. So if we were to grab the coordinate locations, the XY locations at this log and this log, we would have a data set with two records in it, two rows in the spreadsheet, if you want to look, think about it that way. Um, each one is marked by a coordinate pair, and then we could collect data about the log. We could um, estimate how long it's been laying there. We could estimate what kind of log it is. Um, are there any insects sitting on it? You know, things like that. Um, but those would be point data sets. We uh, can, yeah, x1, y1, x2, y2. We could map the river by collecting coordinate locations for the center line going downstream. Um, if we collected those as individual points, that would be another point data set, but we could connect them together with a line and imagine those as straight lines in between the dots. Um, so if our X location, Y location um, coordinate pairs were connected together, that would make a line for us. And um, that's another kind of vector data, a polyline. Um, last, we could have a polyline that starts and ends at the same place and has a rule that says this is a filled area, and those are called polygons. So we have three different types of vector data, points that are defined by a coordinate pair, polylines that are uh, coordinate locations connected together, and then polygons, which are just filled um, polylines that wrap around on themselves. Um, so if you look at this, this would basically, this, this image here would be three different data sets plus that cartoon base map that I showed you initially. So we'd have points in one data set, a polyline in one data set, and polygon in a third data set. You have to have um, different map layers for each type of vector geometry. Geometry meaning points, lines, polygons. Okay. So, points, lines, and polygons, vector data. Raster data, which we're not going to work with this week, but you did work with last week. The elevation data and the hillshade, those are examples of raster data. Vector data is considered discrete because data only exists at this location. And then the other, um, like the connections, are just rules that um, allow these XY locations to work together. Think of a raster as a continuous data set. It's like a grid. Um, you can, it, it often is a photograph of the ground, like a satellite image or um, an image taken from an airplane. So you'd have data everywhere on the landscape that's bounded by the extent of your raster. Um, each one of these is called a pixel or a cell, just like in a photograph. And they can be different sizes. Sometimes they're very small and you have a lot of uh, resolution, just like photograph. Sometimes they're really big. You can have um, a data set that covers a whole continent and each one of these cells might measure five kilometers on the ground in each direction. But what we can do here then, instead of uh, representing actual locations with an XY coordinate pair, we can just say, okay, we've got this grid cell. Let's, let's collect and information about this area on the ground. It might be the slope of this cell. It might be the elevation at this cell. Or we could do land cover, where we give it um, some kind of a code that represents the dominant land cover feature. So here I just kind of went through and did that for fun. The dominant land feature, tree, 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 rock, 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 tree, grass, 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 um, shrub, grass, log, water, See what I'm getting at. And so these could even be numeric representations. Tree might equal one, um, so that you're, um, the way you're storing the data about the landscape could be numeric, but it's really just kind of a code, 
or it could be truly continuously numeric where it's the elevation at that um, cell's location. So rasters are structured completely differently than vector data. They're still defined by a coordinate pair. It's usually the lower um, right or left corner. You define the coordinate location, and then we know how big each cell is, and we know how many rows and columns there are, so the rest of them are just um, kind of extrapolated from that one location. So completely different structure. This week we're going to focus on vector data, uh, what that looks like in a GIS, and how you store information about those locations in a GIS. Um, and I just want to remind you guys, these first couple of labs, take your time. Um, this is kind of the foundational stuff that's going to get you through the rest of the semester. So if you can take your time reading through this and, and consider it a reading, reading assignment as well as just getting the exercise done, you'll thank us for it later. Uh, remember, data credits come from the data that we provide to you at the beginning of the instructions. Um, Utah AGRC is the source for the data that you're going to be working with this week. Um, this week, you'll be answering questions as you work through it, so there is an accompanying answer form. You can submit your answers to the questions here. Uh, make sure you read the questions carefully and make sure you're formatting your answers correctly. It'll save us all a lot of time. Um, and then last, I just want to do a quick reminder. Remember to set up your files carefully. It's going to get more complex as we work through them. On your desktop, Right-click, New Folder, remember no spaces, GIS. If you've got one from last week, a GIS folder, great, use that. Um, inside here, if you didn't already make a Lab 2, notice no spaces. Folder for your work, make sure you make a new Lab 2 folder by right-clicking. Um, and then when you go to download the data for this week, you can download it directly to that folder. Just click to download this really quick. Whoopsie, yeah, I just did it twice. So it's unzipping. When it's done, I'm going to show in folder. It's still working. It's an unconfirmed download until it's done. OK, then it pops up like this. And remember, I like to go to where I can see the zipper or the Z, and then right click extract all and use the browse or the dot 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 button to navigate to your GIS work or your GIS lab 2 folder and remember it's asking you for a location so don't go too far highlight it and select folder verify that it's going into the lab 2 extract okay that'll take care of that and then when we open arc pro remember you want to start a new map template, not catalog. Um, call it week two. I'm going to browse again to my desktop, my GIS folder, lab two. OK. And then the last thing you need to do to get everything connected, uh, remember, is to go to the catalog window. Uh, if you don't have this for some reason, Remember, you can go to View and reset your panes or open the catalog pane. But you're going to go to Catalog and then right click on Folders to add a folder connection. And then go back to your GIS folder. And this is a location, so you're going to want to single click to highlight Lab 2. And as it connects, then we can see here's our intro spatial data, data vector. <laughs> Great naming convention, but notice all those underscores. This is going to save a lot of headaches as we get into some of the more complex analysis later in the semester. So here's your data, and that's all you need to get going. All right, questions, let us know. Thanks.